very good evening everyone now uh, in today's uh, talk i would like to give you my insights on how to best tackle the cat waste section now uh, see uh, qa comes as the last section in the exam it has its uh, 40 minutes time and 22 questions so remember we know that it will be with the last section so the first thing that you need to keep in mind is once you are done with dilr take a moment just maybe one deep breath uh, and come back with an attitude that now this is the last section i'll give my best right and the qa section is different from the other sections there are no sets practically so every question is like a fast ball coming towards you you have to either play it or leave it right treat every a question based on its merit right so you also have to be ready to leave some questions be ready for that don't get stuck in every question what i mean is in the first 15 to 30 seconds when you read a question you need to first decide whether you are attempting it or leaving it okay it doesn't make sense that you first attempt it and uh, you know maybe after 4 5 minutes then you decide to leave it so that should not be happening right so remember The, this section needs a different level of alertness every question you need to first decide whether i am doing it or leaving it you know and this being the last section uh, i would say uh, remember you have to uh, put that extra josh into you when you are done with dilr to you know give the final push because if you end this one these 120 minutes on a high definitely you will be doing well right so uh, i have just uh, put in some uh, pictures to give you an idea it's it's like uh, you know uh, playing every question on merit uh, yeah it's it's like a traffic signal right uh, if it's a tough question you find it difficult you you do the red light comes you have to immediately stop and uh, just you know uh, do not attempt that question right uh, if it's uh, if you get a, if your mind gives you a go green signal in the initial uh, uh, you know 10 15 uh, seconds then you attempt it i mean if you read the question and you feel yes i know what to write and i if i write a couple of steps i'll get the answer uh or your mind says that okay this is i have done these type of questions i i know the process there's a process memory uh at we factory you you have learned almost all the concepts right so uh, if you the question type resonates with you you attempt or you leave right all of you have done all of the previous year questions as well so uh you will get most of the questions that could you, your mind can resonate with if the framing is tricky uh, that is when you decide that i should either leave it or bookmark it uh, the red and the green light they matter a lot if you get overly stuck in a difficult question that will hurt you in terms of time also probably accuracy uh, and if you leave a very easy question that that makes you less competitive on the day right so be strategically sound when you when you practice uh, or revise any previous year or uh, mock question now till cat and apply it on the exam day so uh, lod analysis where so when we talk about the level of difficulty right see modern math geometry arithmetic algebra numbers broadly the questions can be classified into these categories uh, modules and every question type uh, by by virtue of uh, how complicated it is to read and how lengthy the solution is uh, we can categorize a question into easy moderate difficult so both these things play a role like for example for me i i am an arithmetic die hard fan so for me i attempt every arithmetic question practically uh, apart from maybe one rare difficult uh, even that doesn't happen so basically for arithmetic i can do everything for modern math uh, 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 geometry I, i would want to do only the easy ones they are not my strong zones for algebra uh, and uh, for numbers i i like to do the easy to moderate ones so that is how the game works right uh, you have to be cautious about uh, the type of the question as well as the module from which it comes so uh, the level is a combo of both these things right uh, so i i just took a paper cat 21 slot 3 uh, according to me when i tried to analyze it uh, there, there there were uh, more questions uh, on the ns arithmetic front and uh, more than uh, you know almost uh, half of them were doable right uh, geometry mensuration again uh half are pretty doable algebra and modern math slightly on the tricky side uh, on in this slot but if you see in in totality uh there are there are some questions in every module that you can attempt 
right? Even if you're not very great in that module. So nine questions, everyone can solve. Who has done, uh, let, let's say at B-Factory, if I say, if you've done the class sheets, right? And if you've done properly the last two, three years trending papers, you might be able to do even half, maybe a half of, uh, you know, uh, the questions in the moderate to difficult uh, domain, depending on which of these modules you like more, right? So that is how the game works. Got it. So if you're doing these nine easy to moderate ones, if you're being that selective and out of the other 13, if you get another three, four also correct, then you have cleared the cutoff for uh, almost all ions, right? So keep this in mind. It's strategically very important that uh, there will be seven, six to eight questions in that moderate to difficult part, which you should leave. So for me, I would want that, you know, uh, geometry mensuration if they're, they're, and modern maths, if there are three, four difficult questions, I would leave those. And maybe one from NS arithmetic and I'll then try to uh, identify which can I do um, most among the remaining questions. So leaving the most difficult balls, not getting out to those balls, that is where the key lies. Okay. So keep this in mind uh, as you uh, proceed in your journey towards CAT and on the day when you take the CAT exam. Now, as I said, uh, the type of module and, uh, you know, also which uh, particular exam are we uh, uh, going for, right? Uh, that also, uh, which type of uh, question are we going for? That also determines uh, your overall performance in a particular question. So like this one, uh, this question is talking about how many ways can you go from H to O, right? Following the shortest path. Now, if I have done such, this is not the first time such question has come in CAT. If I have done such a question in, pre, uh, in, in any previous year uh, paper or something, I, I, I'll do it. Uh, if not, and if it strikes, to me, see, the first thing that needs to strike in the first 15, 20 seconds is, okay, shortest path from H to O. So you have to come from H to A and then go from B to O. If that strikes, I can still think about it that, okay, two rights and two downs will bring me to A. Five rights and two downs will give, bring me to O. If I don't make that much sense, right, the question doesn't strike to me, then I should not even attempt it. Got the point. So there are two things to understand. Have I done such a question before? Am I clear that the shortest path is H to A then B to O. If yes, do I know the concept? Then I can try or I leave. So for me, this was an easy to moderate question for someone who has done such a question before or understands the concept of PNC very strongly. But it was a moderate to difficult question if uh, somebody has never done such a question and does not like PNC. Right? Because here you have to find how many paths. Got it? So if you look at the solution, there are uh, you know, on the upper side, there are two rights and two downs that will take you to the point A from H to A, right? So, uh, RRDD, right, right, down, down is a, a total, uh, the uh, how the roots uh, get, get, root get formed. So, 4C2, uh, that is 6 comes on the top and similarly 5 and 2, 5 R's and 2 uh, downs. So, 7 out of, uh, you select 2 out of 7. So, 7C2, right, uh, that becomes 21. Final answer is, because you have to take both, it is and. 6 into 21, 126. Uh, so conceptually, if you have any doubts, you can come to the institute tomorrow and get it clarified. Uh, the idea is to understand how much time should I think first to uh, uh, think which question am I going to solve. And then, uh, let us, so maybe 20 seconds to think, am I going to try this? Another 20 seconds to think, how, do, how will I proceed? If this much is clear, then you try, else you leave. Got the point? Right. So see on, on, on the downside, there are five rights and two downs. Any route that you take, okay, it has to have a right or a down. There is no other way you can get the shortest path from B to O. For that matter, from H to A. A, B is compulsory for all to get the short, shortest route. This much hint is enough. Uh, you can then now, you know, uh, try it on your own as well. Okay, here comes another question. A plus B plus C to the power 15, number of distinct terms in the expansion. Now see. Uh, directly, I also don't know uh, what, what kind of formula I can apply here, right? There, there is a formula, but uh, let's leave it, leave that for a moment. Normally, what I would do is, no, I will, I'll split it into a binomial. So if I'm comfortable with a multinomial or binomial, I'll try it or I'll not, right? So I, I know if I split it like a plus b plus c power 15, uh, number of terms will be 16 terms, power 0 to power n, power 15, so 0 to 15, 16 terms. And each of these terms will be n plus 1 because the binomial has n plus 1 terms. Right. So if I am able to think that much, I will try. Okay. 16 terms in the first, first term will have one term, second will have two terms, third will have three terms, last one will have 15, uh, the power 15 one will have 
16 terms. So that is how uh, then you uh, add these n into n plus 1 by 2, you get the answer. Okay. So understand, either I understand the question or I not. For some people who, who uh, you know, might not have seen such questions, you might be thinking, okay, these are difficult questions or I'm not sure. Right. But that is the point. You don't have to get stuck sequentially. There will be questions which you like. For example, okay, I, I, I'll tell you that. Okay, uh, let, Let's proceed for the moment. Look at this question. A number of equilateral triangles of side 2 are available to form equilateral triangles of side 16, 18 up to 30. Find the total number of triangles used. Okay. All right. You have to form, find, form triangles of side 16. So side 16 will have how many uh, side 2 ka sides? Uh, I think I can get 8. 8 on this side, 8 on this side. Right? And the area is root 3 by 4 a square. So it will be 8 square, 64. And the next one will be 9 square, 81. So if I get the logic, right? I can actually try solving this. See, I made, uh, just to explain, uh, uh, if somebody has a doubt, uh, you can go through this again. See, if, if, if it's a 4 by 4, there will be 2, 2, 2, 2. If it's an 8 by 8, then there will be 4, 4, 4, 4. So, total 64 triangles will get used in an 8 by 8. Okay. Uh, that is a uh, 16 unit uh, one. So, uh, just look at this solution. Uh, then, uh, or you can directly use area of the larger one divided by area of the smaller one. Uh, to find 64 and uh, that is uh, 16 by 2 8 square so 18 by 2 9 square 30 by 2 15 square you have to sum it up summation of 8 square uh, once 8 square the sum is n into n plus 1 into n plus 1 by 6 once a 15 again n into n plus 1 to n plus 1 by 6 first case may n is 8 uh, sorry 7 second case may n is 15 that is the logic that i've used go through the solution uh, and, uh, and again if you have a, a, any doubt uh, get it clarified at the institute Okay, now another question. Again, these are these are uh, mostly most uh, cat questions. Uh, a starts from point A at nine, travels east. Okay, B starts later, uh, travels south. What and then the distance? Reduce. Now this is very clear to me that when, when I find uh, there will be a triangle formed and uh, uh, distance will be known. I have to find the time. So the question is clear. I know I need now need to draw the diagram. If I draw the diagram, I'll be able to solve this question. All right, that is what I have done. Right, I, I, I uh, on solving, on plotting these distances, I could get uh, that uh, uh, on the uh, east side axis, the distance is 70. And uh, then I found the time and accordingly, I found the time when uh, uh, B will start. Right, so uh, go through the solution. Uh, you'll be able to uh, run through this and understand. Uh, you, uh, I, I hope most of these questions you might have tried at home before. Uh, if you have a doubt, uh, pause the screen uh, later and uh, just tr try to uh, go through question by question and uh, refer to the solution screen and understand the steps. Okay. Uh, next one, a ball of diameter 4, uh, 4 is kept on a hollow cylinder standing vertically and high to the cylinder is 3, volume is 9. What is the topmost point of the ball to the base of the cylinder? If you get the diagram, you will be able to solve this question more often than not. See. Root 3. So, how do, how, do you, how do you get root 3? You uh, Pi r square h, you equate it, the volume, with 9 pi. You will get the radius as root 3. The radius is root 3 and just visualize this diagram. If you visualize this diagram vertically, you will be able to solve the question. Okay? Uh, if you are not able to visualize this diagram, if you have never practiced any three geometric question, then this becomes slightly difficult for you. Got it? So, uh, try uh, uh, going through this uh, question again. Try visualizing the diagram. Uh, if you do that, uh, this is not a very difficult question. Okay. ABC is the right angle triangle with BC as the hypotenuse. Fair enough. ABAC lengths are given. Okay. Two are given. Third will be found out. Right. Minimum possible time to reach the hypotenuse sum of speed. Again, uh, just like a question before, this geometry, I know I will find the distance, I will find the time. I, I have that confidence. It's very simple. See, I've taken, uh, made the diagram, uh, equated the areas, got the distance, found, found the time. These are cat questions. Just think. If you know a type of question, you attack it. If you don't know this particular type of question, you find it difficult to attack. Uh, understand students, the point that I'm trying to make here is uh, any type of question that you get, it follows certain steps in maths, right? Let me put it as three steps in CAT. Step number one, again, uh, at the risk of sounding redundant, I will keep repeating because this is the uh, sectional strategy part which we are here today for. Step number one, 
as soon as possible decide can i tackle this question step number 2 if you think you might go a step further another 30 seconds see if you are able to write make a diagram or write an equation which can possibly then lead to the solving part if that first one minute is not becoming productive leave the question only this way in the 22 questions that you have in the in the 40 minutes you will be able to select and solve the ones which you can possibly on the day that is how you get your best result okay so keep this in mind so uh, with uh, those uh, clear uh, instructions on uh, you know how to think in the section uh, my best wishes to everyone there, there is another talk which i'll take on uh, next week on how to uh, prepare yourself for the final day uh, kamlesh sir will be taking a talk on uh, section strategy for dilr as well uh, i i repeat any of these questions again these are important type questions uh you 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 must have attempted these uh if you have any doubt uh, just look at the solution in the video if you still have any doubt uh, come to the institute tomorrow and get uh, your doubts cleared also uh, particularly for quants uh, try to focus a lot on the previous year questions uh, which have come in the last 2 uh, to 3 years uh, try to gain confidence on all types of questions because easy to moderate ones should uh, you know apart from class sheets and uh, your normal book solving if you have done the previous year questions uh many questions definitely in the exam will be very similar to what you have done before so that's the key create a bucket from where you can pick and solve similar questions that come in the exam that is the power of process memory right so keep revising keep solving and uh, uh, keep challenging yourself but remember uh, be fresh do not get stuck in any question follow that process right that we just discussed thank you